Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was totally written, and the idea came from Romans chapter 7. So the author was Robert Louis Stevenson, and it's just an amazing thing. It's about our sin nature that we still live with, even as believers. So what is the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? What is it exactly? Well, Dr. Jekyll is a kind, well-respected, and intelligent scientist, right? He seems to be all good, who meddles with the darker side of science. Interesting. As he wants to bring out his second nature, his evil nature, right? So where did he get this idea? He got it from Romans chapter 7. Isn't that amazing, you guys? He he actually read Romans chapter 7 and realized with Paul that he still struggles with this sin nature that still lives within his, in him, his, his old flesh, as the, some call it. That's our old nature. Even though we're born-again believers in Jesus, we still drag around that cocoon, right? That old flesh. Like if we were going to be a butterfly, is born again, but we still have that old nature until we're fully free. And that only comes at your death, who to, because to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. And we know if we're present with the Lord, we're perfect like him. Or when he returns to take us to heaven with him, that to be caught up to be with the Lord, then will we be perfect, but not until then, guys. So and this gives you hope because you realize when you mess up, when you sin, God still has a plan with you. He's not done with you, okay? All right, well, let's get into it. Here we go. Romans chapter 7, and we're not going to go through every single verse, but we're going to look at most of it. So a bunch of it anyway. For I do not understand Paul talking with himself. This is that diatribe where he's arguing with himself. It's a great way to teach, by the way, and some professors do that even to this day. But he says, I do not understand what I am doing, for I am not practicing what I want to do, but I do the very thing that I hate. Have you ever caught yourself in that predicament, you guys? If you're a Christian, if you're honest, yes, you have. First John tells us that he who says he has no sin is a liar and the truth isn't even in him. Well, that means if you're saying you're perfect and you have no sin, you've you've come to that perfect, perfect state, that's a lie. That's not true. You still sin, I still sin. That's what we're looking at here in Romans chapter 7. And and it's good. It's good for us to understand this. So let's go into it some more, you guys. So, but I do the very thing that I hate, Paul said. In other words, I still sin (laughs) and I hate it. I hate my sin, which is a good thing. You want to hate your sin. Ask the Lord to teach you to hate your sin. That's very important. So that's where Robert Louis Stevenson got the idea of this amazing story. So Romans 7 also says, But now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin that dwells in me. Wow, Paul the Great, right? Paul, who who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul, who was the greatest, I think, one of the greatest apostles ever. And This is later when he wrote Romans 2, by the way. It was like 56, 57 AD. He's been a believer for like 20 years now. He's not just a fresh believer. This is is Paul, the, the saint, right? Well, he's showing you that he still struggles with his sin nature, and that should give you hope. But that struggle is the good thing. If you're struggling, like my friend told me one time, Jeff Sill, a great friend of mine, he said, there's holiness in the struggle. If you're struggling with sin, that's good. That means it's bothering you. If you're not struggling with your sin, that's a scary place to be. And some people in churches are like, you know, well, I don't struggle with pornography or anger, any of these things that these other guys have problems with. I pray for them. Well, you might be a gossip. A lot of people who are in church staff, a lot of pastors and other leaders and people in the church staff, they gossip and it's not good. Don't gossip. God hates that. He despises it. Don't say anything in front of other people that you wouldn't tell that person. In fact, you should talk to that person first before you go, you know, even in a prayer, talking about praying for somebody, and you're like, what is he doing? He's gossiping. Don't do that. All right? So a lot of churches are guilty of that. So let's keep going in this presentation, and let's look at it some more. So Paul said, No longer am I the one doing it, but sin, that sin nature that dwells in me, right? That monster within, right? Like Dr. Jekyll, but there's Mr. 
hide. For I know that good does not dwell in me. That is my flesh, right? That sinful nature, it's it's no good. And then he says, wretched man that I am. Now, wait a minute. Did he say wretched man that I was? No. He said, wretched man that I am. Present tense. He's saying, I'm a wretched man. I'm a sinner. In fact, I'm the chief among all sinners, he says later. So let's look at that again. Wretched man that I am. Who will set me free from the body of this death? In other words, he's like, I, where's my hope? Who's going to save me from this, this flesh, this second nature, this, this human nature that I have, this sinful nature? Who's going to rescue me? Well, watch this. There is a rescuer. <laughs> there is a redeemer. And it's coming. Watch this. But I do the very thing that I hate. Remember that? And that's Mr. Hyde and the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde story. Well, that's H-Y-D-E, Hyde, as in a beast, an animal, right? The hide of an animal. We are not to act like animals, you guys. believe Christians, especially believers, and in, in, in humans, we're not supposed to act like animals. We're different. We're to rule over uh, the wild beasts of the field and, and, and the animals. We are in charge. God gave us that authority. We're not to act like them. So Mr. Hyde, like he's, he's he got a hide like an animal, like a wild animal. That's what Robert Louis Stevenson was getting at there. Here it is, like a beast hide, right? <laughs> Here's a great book, by the way, you guys. My friend Wayne Taylor wrote this, and let me tell you something. This is the greatest book on Romans chapters 1 through 8 you will ever read. It's called The Civil War Within, and that's what we're talking about here in Romans chapter 7. And then it gets into 8, which is beautiful, but it's a civil war. You and I, we we have a civil war that's inside of us, that, that sinful old nature, that human nature that we still carry around in our new nature in Christ. And it's warring. It's, it, but that's a good thing, right? Remember, there's holiness in the struggle. If you're struggling with sin, if you hate your sin and, and, it, and it's a horrible thing and it bothers you, that's good. That's a good. It's good to have that civil war within. That means the Holy Spirit's convicting you of your sin and he lives inside of you. If there was no conviction, that's scary, like I said before. But my friend Wayne wrote this book, and it's amazing, and you should really check it out. So I think you can find it. I don't think it's on Amazon, but you can go to, um, if you go to Calvary Fellowship, I think the new name of it is is uh, Mount Lake Terrace Church, or yeah, I think it's Mount Lake Terrace Church now. But anyway, you can find it. Um, just message me down below if you'd like to get it, and I'll try and get a copy for you or tell you where you can get one as well. But this book will help you tremendously if you're struggling with whether you think you're a believer or not, even though you know you've been saved and, and you're, you're realizing, man, I still sin. Well, it's okay. All right. And this is what the book of Romans is about, too. It helps you understand this. So Romans 7 continues. Paul continues, who will set me free from the body of this death? Right? This, this sinful nature that's destined to die. Who's going to rescue me from this body of death? Then he says this. He changes. Everything changes right here. It shifts. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus defeated this, you guys, on the cross. That's what he's saying. So then, on the one hand, I myself, with my mind, am serving the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. And what's the law of God? Again, you guys remember Jesus said the law hinges on this one thing, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's everything right there in the law, because if you do those two things, the rest of the law will happen. Right? If you're loving the Lord your God with all your heart and you're loving others as yourself, then the law is fulfilled. And that's what God's showing us. He's showing us the secret, the golden key to, to obeying the law. But here, Paul, 
He's saying, on one hand, I myself, with my mind, right, I want to, I want to serve the law of God, which is perfect, right? But on the other hand, with my flesh, the law of sin, my other nature wants to obey the law of sin, is what he's so, showing us here, you guys. So, and it gives you great hope. But here's a, the main thing right here. Here it is, you guys. This is the this is the main part of R- the book of Romans. In fact, Romans one through eight is all based on this. Here it is, Romans eight chapter or verse one. Okay, chapter eight verse one. Remember this verse. This is so important. Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all. Not a little bit. Not at all. No condemnation at all for those who are in. Christ Jesus. If you have given your life to Jesus, if you have been born again and you know it, you are in Christ. Remember that. Realize that. Tell yourself that. Pray that. Understand that. Read that over and over, you guys. Here it is again. Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all. That means condemnation means punishment, God's wrath. There's no punishment or God's wrath for you anymore at all for those who are what in christ jesus in christ i think paul mentions that over 80 times in christ in christ this is so critical and so important that you understand this it's it relieves you it gives you peace in your mind and your heart that civil war it, it it just coats that civil war with god's peace when you understand this there's no condemnation for you in christ Are you in Christ? If you're not in Christ, at the end of this episode, you can pray to receive Christ and have that peace. Receive his grace. Grace means getting something good that you don't deserve. He will clean you up. You go to him as you are with all your sins, all your baggage, all your your problems and your dirt and your filth. You go to him just like that, and then he will clean you up. Don't try and get cleaned up to come to God. You come to God now today. In fact, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. And it also says that if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't harden your heart like Pharaoh did, right? Remember Pharaoh with Moses? He hardened his heart. Don't do that. Keep a tender, open heart and receive what God has for you through Jesus. Jesus is offering this to you. That's why he died on that cross and shed his blood and he, in three days, was raised from the dead so that you can be raised. You could have life forever with him. And you'll have that opportunity in a couple of moments here, in a few moments, to receive Christ. And this could be the greatest moment of your life, my friend. But there's no condemnation, no punishment. God's wrath is not reserved for you at all if you are in Christ Jesus. And so Paul's relieved as he understands this because he was struggling with his sin nature. And now he says, there's no condemnation for me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. You are set free as a believer in Jesus. You have freedom. In fact, that's one of the greatest things I remember when I was saved, was this freedom. And then remember, in him and in Christ, we talked about that earlier, are found 180 times in the New Testament. In him, be in Christ. Paul also, he wrote this, often wrote, grace and peace to you. It was either like a greeting or a conclusion And he would say this grace and peace. And why? Why? Because, my friend, when you know God's grace, when you understand and receive God's amazing grace, then you will have what? Peace. His peace will fall upon you like a like a waterfall trickling living water down upon you that cleanses you and sets you free. That's how the Holy Spirit works. He's a picture of that living water. He is that living water, and he will set you free. And that's getting a free gift from God that you don't deserve, which is grace. So when you understand that, then, my friend, you will have what? Peace. Peace of mind, which is so needed today, right? It's 2023 right now, November 2023, almost December. And people need peace. They have no peace anymore. There's, this world has just gone crazy with violence and There's anger everywhere, and there's strife. 
but God wants to give you peace, my friend, and he can do that. He is just a prayer away. So here's the question, my friend. Are you in Christ Jesus? Are you in him? Have you given your life to him? Are you in Christ? Are you in him? Are you protected by him? Have you been saved? Have you been born again? If you have not, this is your moment, my friend, right now. You can pray this prayer to receive what God has. It's a free gift like Christmas. You you didn't do anything to deserve that, that gift that's under the tree, but you, as a child, remember, you would just wanted to open it so bad. You wanted those gifts and you wanted to open it. Well, you can open this one up. God's offering it to you. It's there at a different tree at the foot of the cross the curse tree that Jesus hung on. And he took that condemnation, that punishment, that God's wrath, he took it upon himself. That wrath was that was for you and for me when we sin. All those sins added up to God's wrath and that his righteous wrath, which has to be dealt with. And that's why Jesus died. He died that perfect death. He lived a perfect life and he shed his blood and died for you on that cross and me so that we could live that you can live forever and ever in paradise with him in him in christ well if you would like to be in christ if you'd like him to be your lord and your savior you might feel conviction for your sin you might feel bad for your sin that's okay that's good that's a godly sorrow that that's a good thing if you are experiencing that right now you can give your life to him just repeat these words after me this prayer after me All right, just repeat after me. Pray this prayer. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sin. I need to turn from that sin and I'm asking you to help me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and he's alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this moment forward. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend. If you did that, God loves you. The heaven's rejoicing right now over what you just did. And if you did that, hey, comment down below because I want to pray for you and help you. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I love you. And hey, guess what? God loves you in a much, much greater way than anyone ever will. God loves you. Hey, hit this playlist right here. You'll see all the last episodes in the book of Romans that we've done. And you can go back and check them all out. So click on this playlist right here.